So this is my third video in my series about how to use a Dobsonian telescope. And in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the accessories that I use that I find very helpful when I'm out viewing the stars. Now the first thing that I think every astronomer should have is a decent pair of binoculars. Now you don't want a really high-powered set of binoculars. What you want is something that will give you a wide field of view. That means you can see a lot of the sky at the same time. These are 10 by 30 binoculars. Basically what that means is the magnification is 10 times and um, the aperture of the binoculars is, is 50 millimeters. And these work very well. Some people even go down to a 7 times magnification so you can get a 7 by 50. But these are so helpful. What I use my binoculars for when I'm out there is basically locating stuff. Sometimes I'll just scan the sky looking for something that looks interesting and if I see it then I'll move and put the telescope on it. I've discovered some really cool things on my own that way. And then also just when you're trying to figure out, um, find something that you looked at before or just trying to get your bearings, a lot of times the binoculars are very, very useful. And they're a lot more useful than the telescope is for locating things because you have such a wide field of view. The next thing I bring out with me is a Phillips head screwdriver and I need this to adjust the secondary mirror and that's a good one to have in your pack. Now one thing that's very important when you're out um, at night viewing the stars is that you need to get your night vision adjusted so you need to allow your eyes to adjust to the darkness and you'll be able to see a lot more. Now then the problem is what do you do when you need to look around your bag, change your eyepieces? Well Red light doesn't destroy our vision, like our, your night vision, the way other um, spectrums of the light do. So what I've done is I've just taken a regular flashlight and I put a red balloon over top of it. And so that gives me a red light flashlight. You can probably buy one that's actually um, made to, to give off red light, but this is my simple solution. Now the other thing that is quite helpful is a laser pointer and um, you can see I've got this laser pointer right here and you have to be very careful with these, you don't want to shine them in your eye and you want to make sure that you never shine it anywhere towards an airplane but this, it's amazing how it sends out uh, the laser straight up into the sky you can actually see the line at night going to what you want to point to and this is very helpful when there's more than one of you out there that's um, viewing so maybe you see something or maybe you have a friend and you want to tell them, hey it's right over there and you can just use a laser pointer and it works awesome. And so I highly recommend getting a laser pointer. And you want to get a, a green light laser pointer. Uh, I forget why they say that's the best, but that's what I read that you should get. And so I use this all the time. And when I'm showing um, the stars to kids, I think sometimes they're more interested in the laser pointer than, the, than they are in the telescope. But anyway, very handy tool. Another thing, surprisingly, that's very helpful is a hair dryer. Now, one of the great problems you'll have out at night, at least I do here, is on a cold, clear night, condensation gets over everything. So all your stuff gets wet, and your lenses get um, condensation on them, and it just becomes crazy. You're out there looking at something, and it gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, and you're like, what's what's happening? And then you realize, oh, you've got um, condensation on your uh, eyepiece. And so I take the, the hair dryer out, it took me a while to figure this out, and I just periodically blow off um, my different um, eyepieces or the finder scope in order to have a clear view. And there are other things that you can do. You can get special little uh, heat wraps that you can put around your eyepiece and that will keep it warm. Basically you need to keep the telescope and the eyepieces warmer than the air. And uh, the reason it gets colder than the air, it's kind of crazy, is because the heat is actually radiating off of your telescope and off of your accessories back to space. I know it sounds really crazy. You would think that with the air moving around, the ambient temperature, it would stay all the same temperature, but it doesn't. It actually radiates heat off into the void of space. Now, another thing that is very helpful is your collimator, and this is a laser as well. What this is used for is aligning your mirrors, and I'm going to do a whole video about aligning your mirrors. And there are other ways to collimate. Some people say you don't need a collimating laser, 
but I just find it to be very convenient. I'm kind of lazy and it's a really easy way to collimate your telescope. Another accessory that's nice, and I'll talk about this maybe a little bit more when we talk about eyepieces, but it's a Barlow lens. And basically what a Barlow does is you put it in series with your eyepiece and it can uh, magnify, change the magnification of the telescope. So this is a two times Barlow. So any eyepiece that I put over this Barlow will have twice the magnification of what it normally has. With a lot of telescopes you may get two eyepieces and so this, if you buy one of these then it can quadruple the, the different magnifications that you have. And So Barlow is very useful. Now one other thing that is useful are um, filters. This is a lunar filter. It's made to uh, look at the moon and it just filters out some of the light that keeps you from seeing all the nooks and cranny of, crannies of the moon. And I use it sometimes, sometimes I don't. A lot of times um, filters are used in astrophotography so you can, you can get a whole range of filters that filter out different spectrums of light to help you see things better. Now one thing that is very important is your star chart. Now this is a star chart called a planosphere and they make these for um, all the different uh, latitudes. This one is 35 degrees south, so I'm not too far from the 35 degrees south line here in New Zealand. And what you can use this for is to figure out what the sky is going to look like. So this is my southern point, and I can always orient, orient myself outside for the southern point by looking at the, the southern cross and the, there's two pointer stars. So I always know where the southern, southern point is. In the north, uh, you have Polaris, or the, the pole star, the North Star, and so you can use that to orient yourself to where North is. And basically what you do with this is um, it's got a bunch of times and dates on here. And so you just line up whatever time you're looking for. So a lot of times I look around 10 p.m. and I'll line it up to today, which is the 29th of December. And that shows me what stars are, are going to be up in the sky at, at that time. And what's happening is the Earth is constantly changing its orientation to the stars. So you can't always look at what you might want to look at because it might not be up when you want to look at it. And uh, so sometimes you have to wait throughout the year several months to get to a point to where you can look at something. Like right now I can't see Jupiter or Saturn because they're up um, basically during the day. And so I'm waiting until later on in the year to be able to view Jupiter again and then even later to view Saturn. But um, the star charts are very, very helpful. And um, what I'll talk more about this um, when, in a later video. But basically you can, it has all the constellations and various stars written on here. And when you're looking for something, if you know, um, if you look it up online, you can see what star system it's in. You can even download a star chart to show you where it is. And then you can kind of use the constellations to locate yourself in the sky. I don't know all the constellations. I actually only know a couple. But I know enough to help me find my way around the sky. So this actually will become very useful in finding what you want to see. Now, another thing that's very helpful is some apps on your smartphone and I have a lunar phase app and this tells me where the moon's gonna be. It tells me um, what time it's gonna rise, what time it's gonna set, it tells me if it's gonna be full moon or waxing gibbous, or waning gibbous, or new moon, all the different phases of the moon. And this is very important because contrary to what you might think, the best nights to go out and do astronomy are when the moon isn't out because the moon is so bright, it's having, like having a big spotlight shine on everything and it's very hard to see the rest of the sky. So the only time you really want the moon out there when you're viewing is when you want to actually look at the moon. Otherwise, it's really nice. There's many, 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 many nights where the, the moon sets before the early evening so you have a clear night or it's not rising until late in the night so you have a clear night. So that lunar app is very helpful. Now another thing I'll show you on my phone that's very helpful is I've downloaded an app called Twilight and this turns everything on my phone red so I can still use the phone but not have the light from the phone affect my night vision. Yeah, it's called Twilight. That's a really good one to have if you want to take your phone out. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about is a program. And this program 
is called Stellarium. And Stellarium, you can download it for free, you can download it for Mac or PC. And basically it gives you a view of the night sky from where you are. So you put in your current location and you can actually see where the stars are from this. You can see where the planets are. You can zoom in and see some really cool pictures of different things in the sky. And you can move it all around. And uh, this thing also has, you can actually take your computer out. I'll come around here. Because this thing, you can actually come down and turn on night mode. And it turns red. So once again, you don't have to worry about ruining your night vision while you're using the, the laptop out there. So, those are the basic accessories. There's other things. Another thing I forgot to mention is I bring a towel out or something to cover all my components because they do get condensation on them. If I cover them up, they don't get condensation. If you have a case, that's great. I kind of like to lay out my stuff on a table next to where I'm viewing and cover it up. So hopefully um, these accessories aren't too hard to come by and they're very helpful and I would encourage you to, to have them all.